Thank you for watching this special edition of the Sports Heads. We um, really truly appreciate all of your kind words and comments that you've made this week in the wake of the death of our good friend Kevin Cadle at the age of 62. Kevin was our mentor, our guiding light, and above all else, he was our friend. He was also the co-founder of the Sports Heads, along with Andre Dixon, who I welcome alongside me. Andre, you um, co-founded the Sports Heads with Kevin. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a very tough period of time for, for you know, colleagues and obviously we're thinking our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Um, it's a complete shock to, to us to, to lose such a big part of our lives. Um, but, um, you know, Kevin and I came up with this, this concept because we wanted to have, you know, a, a place for fans who <coughs> don't want to be babied. Um, and mm -hmm. don't want to be told what a touchdown is every week um, on, on, on you know channels that we normally watch. And above all else, to have some fun as well. And to have fun and, and, and a place for, for fans to be able to you know uh, show their support and, and, and follow the game that they love and you know having opinions and uh, you know stats and also predictions you know th this is what we wanted to do and Thankfully, you know, it's been well supported and we really thank you guys yeah. for that. Um, and, um, you know, we, we used to spend hours discussing, mm. you know, uh, how the show is going to be working, what, we're gonna, what games we're going to be featuring, mm -hmm. what games are going to be the best games, all mm -hmm. those types of things. And it, it was a joy and an honour to, to, to be able to set this up and, and, and you know, have this work so well. Um, Kevin, like Kevin was a was the focal point. Yeah. It was it was his idea. It was his show, and it was something that he wanted to grow. Yeah. And um, we've tried to do that. We now have to move on. Yeah. And uh, and it, because it's as you said, it's what he would have wanted. Well, yeah, I mean, Ke Kevin, and um, you know, wanted this this show to be big. Uh, we wanted it to to reach the levels that no UK NFL show had actually reached, especially. Um, the fact that it was just the, just us two at the start, and now it's grown to what it is now, and um, you know what what I I feel passionate about, and um, and the rest of the team and you yourself uh, feel passionate about is to to continue his legacy by continuing this this uh, amazing program that we've all put together. He is the driving force, has been the driving force behind it, and he's mm -hmm. I've learned so much from him, mm -hmm. and um, we all have. Yeah, and, and and the thing with Kevin was, he wanted us to continue to grow, yeah. and and I think that's where we're going with this. Well, Kevin is 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 one of the most pro uh, progressive, positive people you could actually have met, and um, you know if he was here, he would be saying to me, you know, we've got to carry on. Let's let's make sure that we focus on how we can actually keep on growing this mm -hmm. this this uh, this channel and do what we do and, and because there's a lot of people out there who you know love what we do and we really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving positive messages um, and you, just for the sake of you guys watching the show really we really really do appreciate it and we're going to carry out what Kevin would would have wanted yeah. to, to continue and grow what we do yeah I mean you've, we've had lots of long conversations about this and uh, it is what Kevin wanted and yeah. um, we are going to Continue to bring in different guests every week. We've had uh, Nick Halling and uh, Mike Carlson, two of the cornerstones of NFL broadcasting in the UK. And uh, along with Kevin, they did uh, more than anybody to grow the sport in the UK. We, we consider them as our friends. We also consider them as colleagues now, which is, is wonderful for us. But uh, it's obviously, we're very heartbroken um, to lose Kevin, especially at such a young age. And, and um, most, most of all, the, the, what Kevin would say is that the show is for you guys, you know, it's, it's, it's for you guys who love, love the, the sports of NBA, NFL, um, and we will continue to do our best to give you the best shows that we can possibly put together. Um, no one ever could replace Kevin, there's always going to be a massive hold uh, here, but what we'll try to do is give you guys what you, what you, what you want and what Kevin would have wanted. Thank you for watching the Sports Heads. Kevin leads of a big void in our lives and uh, he'll truly irreplaceable. But uh, we'll do our best to bring you the best show we possibly can. Thank you again for your support. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, we'd love to hear from you every week.
But uh, thank you and um, God bless. Hello everyone, Cecil Martin here, and I come to you with a heavy heart as we all lost a great man in Kevin Cato recently. I can remember meeting Kevin Cato over 15 years ago in 2002 when I first came to London to broadcast on Sky, and immediately Kevin took me under his wing and became a friend, and later became a great friend, like a big brother, a father figure, a motivator, a confidant, a fun guy to be around. Kevin Cato on the set, <laughs> he was a consummate professional. He was always focused on doing a great job. And it's interesting because he always also knew exactly how to pull the best out of each pundit and each guest. We had so much fun doing the NFL games together. None more than on Thanksgiving when he'd be busting on me for <laughs> the way I ate that, that turkey leg. Or busting on me about, you know, something. <laughs> he always knew I would make our show great. You know, Kevin Cato, outside of the set, man, he was the exact same guy. I can remember going with him when he went to do a motivational talk at a school somewhere in the United Kingdom. I remember watching the faces of the young people and how they were reacting to the words he said. He had a way with people. I can remember walking around Trafalgar Square or Regent Street with Kevin Cato and everybody loved him. And he always had time for everyone. See, Kevin Cato was real laid back with the human. But he could be the most social guy in the room. Kevin Cato can't say enough. He is and was a special man. He taught me a lot, you know, not just in broadcast, but just in life. I remember one thing Kevin always said, Cecil, don't worry about the things you can't control. Work on the things that you can control. And sometimes just hearing that from the right person makes all the difference in the world. I already miss Kevin Cato, as I know that we all do. And all I can say is, Kevin Cato, I love you. I know you're watching, and I know you're still with all of us. Your family, your friends, your fans. We know that you care about us and that you love us, and, I, and, and, and we know that you know that we love you. And so, with that, rest in peace, Kevin. You made an indelible impact on my life and so many others, and we thank you for that. And we will never, ever, Get you. My man. Afternoon, Sportshead fans and Kevin Cagle fans. Um, my tribute to Kevin is going to definitely be a little bit more bubbly, I hope, than others, because that's exactly what he brought to the table every time I saw him, uh, whether it was in the studio, on the street, at a game, you know. My man, that's, as soon as I heard that, I knew Kevin was obviously in the room. Um, my tribute to him is just going to be, uh, you know, bring that bright light back in the room each and every time. Um, and I'm hoping that rubs off on, on everyone that he's ever encountered or come face to face with. Um, I hope everyone obviously spends the time to, to think of uh, all the good stuff that he's done uh, for them in the, the basketball community as, as well as the National Football League as well. Um, I know he won't be forgotten in my lifetime um, and for wh whatever it is I do, whether it's uh, um, work, personal level, he's always going to be in the back of my mind to uh, make sure that the energy is always uh, kept up, um, always constantly smiling, uh, always joking around um, and as I said, I've never seen uh, someone of that stature, um, you know, be walking through the streets and any fan that came up to him always had time for and you just think maybe he knew that person you know but no or he, you know it was just no instantly he's your friend you know installed so much trust into everyone and you know big strong believer um for in myself uh, as well and uh yeah he, he always uh touched my heart and uh yeah rest in peace my man and uh yeah you definitely won't be forgotten uh, by myself or anyone across the world um yeah rest in peace hey 
Hey, my main man, Kev. And I miss you, man. I miss our talks about NBA, Lions, and I'm still not going to agree on your Euro League predictions, but hey, thinking of you and your family. Peace. Oh, but I met him a couple of times just when the uh, international series would come to London um, up at the Grove, and he'd be out there just kind of following up on the press conferences and doing his due diligence there at the training sessions before the games. Um, he didn't know who I was, but I knew who he was. He was always very kind of approachable and a nice guy to chat to. Um, I think what we'll all miss the most from him is just his coverage on Sky Sports, all the Thanksgivings, the great chemistry he had with Neil Reynolds, with Nick Halling before that, with the guests that they uh, used to have on as well on Sky Sports and he was the kind of guy that you were happy to welcome into your home on a Sunday around about six o'clock every single weekend to bring us that ball game. So I think the uh, I think NFL fans across the UK are certainly going to miss his presence around the place as will the NBA fans as well and uh, he will be sorely missed by all. Hey Kev, uh, my man um, seems quite surreal sitting here doing this. Um, I know I've only known you for a short time but man we had some laughs um i knew of you when you coached kingston back in the mid 80s um from watching basketball with my dad and he was a big kingston fan and got me into basketball and and i've never looked back since um which of course led me to doing a basketball show with you very very recently um, and I remember our first meeting at the Hippodrome a few weeks ago and you spoke to me and we talked about our love for the NBA and you you were looking at doing an NBA show and you wanted my number to have a chat about it and see what we could maybe do in relation to that and then we had a meeting about that and you know we seemed really excited about doing it and then obviously did the show um, it's, it seems, does seem very, very surreal to be sitting here doing this. And all I can say is that I miss you. Everyone else misses you. Um, but we will carry on doing the show and hope we can make a show that you would be very, very proud of. We'll miss you, man. Take care. Hey everyone, Harrison Singer here. I remember very well the first time I met Kevin. It was the summer of 2015 and I was interviewing him with Verge Magazine. I remember also hearing that I would be interviewing him on a Friday and I was told I'd be interviewing him on that coming Monday. So with only two days to prepare, I definitely did not feel as if I knew enough about him to sit down with him for a while and ask him questions. So I read his entire biography over that weekend and just before meeting him, I could already tell how driven and how ambitious of a person he was. And meeting him face to face on that Monday, it, it, it held true. But not just that, he was generous, he was kind, and it seemed as if he would have taken his entire day to just sit down and, and answer my questions. It really felt that way. He, he was the kind of person that when you were with him, he really prioritized being with you. He was really there in any conversation he would have with you. And I, that's something that if that something you look for in a person and if they do possess it, it's, it's very respectable. And uh, coming over from America, playing basketball at Penn State and ending up as a coach, as a presenter, again, in a whole other, a whole different country. And ending up as a football presenter also after being so involved in, in basketball, it's it speaks numbers to it again to his ambition and how much of a trailblazer he really was. And from the professional side, to me, Kevin was a tremendous mentor because not just conversations with him we we would have, not just the conversations we would have together about sports, about football, about whatever, but being able to watch Kevin perform his craft and model and incorporate a lot of what he does into my style as a, an aspiring presenter, it was it, it was very, it was just something from, from, it was easy to learn from him. And it, I lost a mentor, I lost a coworker, 
But more importantly, I, I, I lost a friend. And to those who also, to the many others who, who are grieving Kevin's loss, waking up on, on Monday morning for me on October 16th was, it was devastating to, to hear that news. And uh, I know that he was a player, he was a coach, he was a presenter, but there's no doubt in my mind after absolutely kicking ass at all three of those things, there's no doubt he'll be even better at his next job, which is looking down on all of us from up above. So, Kevin, I know that's what I know that's exactly what you'll do and and you'll do it right. So, see you guys later. Hmm. Where do you start? Um, those of you who know me would know that I'm not often lost for words, um, but when my brother Roger contacted me very early on Monday morning and told me that Kevin Cadle had passed away, it took me ages to take it in. Literally it took me ages to take it in. Um, even now, you know, you still sit here again, how, why? Why? Um, but I know that we've been asked to say some words um, about Kev, uh, talk about our memories um, of Kevin. So, um, I'm lucky enough to have called Kevin a friend. Um, I've known him for many, many years. He actually coached my brothers. Um, and yeah, so that was how I first got to know him, just through the coaching really. So, you know, when I put RIP coach, it's because that was, you know, my first introduction to Kev. And over the years, as I've said, um, he became a friend. Um, his close circle of friends uh, included some of my friends. So I'd see him out and about. And of course, I got to see him professionally as well. Um, so when we both do events, BBL events, uh, things of the kind, um, we'd always talk. And he was one of the first people actually who told me that I was doing a good job, which meant so much to me because this is a man that I respected from a professional point of view. Um, because he was at the top of his game, whether it was coaching, uh, whether it was broadcasting, he was at the top of his game. So for him to pay me that compliment meant so much to me. Um, the last time I spoke to Kev was a couple of weeks ago um, at the Betway All-Stars basketball competition that was held at the O2. Um, and I was asked... Uh, by the organisers to do a tour of the O2 um, backstage and around the O2 for the winners of a competition that was held by Betway. So I was taking these winners around and we were backstage in one of the corridors and we went into the media room and just as we were in the media room and I'm explaining to where the press conferences etc would be held in Walt Kev. And I introduced Kev, explained what I was doing, and he took his time out to speak to them, um, ask them, get some of their interests, and absolutely engage with them as though he had all the time in the world, um, when actually he was just about to do a five-hour stint on Sky. Um, and I remember as we walked away, one of the winners, a young lady, said, is that Kevin Cadle, the guy who does the NFL? And I was like, yeah. And she went, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I've got to tell everybody. She started texting. She goes, I can't believe he took time out to speak to us. That was Kev. That was Kev. I've got so many other things I could say about it. Um, the most important thing now, RIP coach, RIP.